Hey, what is up guys? How are we doing? And welcome to a very special PC build, live here at Asus HQ, joined by Mr. Geeker Watt. You may have seen him from other PC build videos. But today is a little bit different. Today is very special because we're doing a white and black PC build with paint. I have not painted components before. I'm a little bit nervous. We might break something. Might, probably will. Is it gonna go well? <laughs> I hope so, I think optimism is key. Let's find out. Kicking off this build then, we have the thing that actually inspired the whole white theme. This is the Dark V700 from Be Quiet. It was actually sent out, it's completely limited edition, so we feel very privileged. And it's a quite a nice sort of size case. It's one of those ones that's not too big, but still very easy to build in. But while getting a white case is quite simple, some of the other components not quite so much. James. And this is where the idea of painting predominantly the graphics card came in. So the heart of this build is the RTX 2070. And we've got eight gigabytes of GDDR6 in here as well. And of course, ray tracing support uh, for nice reflections in the latest AAA titles. Uh, motherboard, we're using the Maximus 11 Hero. I have to think of my feet there. I'm not good with Roman numerals. <laughs> I was gonna say the same. This motherboard does of course sit on the higher end Z390 chipset, which gives us all the bells and whistles. We've got CPU and memory overclocking support, an error code display to help with easier systems diagnostics, and a USB-C port on here as well for a bit of future proofing. Processor that we're using is very aptly labeled. It's from Intel. It is the i7-9700K. And this is pretty much one of the best CPUs you can get for gaming right now. There is some third generation Ryzen CPUs out at the moment that a lot of people might prefer to go for if they're gonna do loads of different things on their computer. But in terms of pure gaming, if you're wanting to do 1080p or 1440p at high refresh rates, then this is still arguably one of the better picks if you're not gonna be mm. doing all and sorts of things. I mean, arguably as well, Intel is still the single-threaded performance king, so those games that aren't optimized for heavy multi-threaded workloads, that is gonna win out Yeah, as well. Precisely. To call the CPU, we're using an RAG Ryu. I'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced. Ant, Mr. Asus, what's the official verdict? How are you supposed to say it? Ryuo is the official. Which I will never be able to say. I don't think it's worth no, trying. No, no, it's not worth trying. It's not worth trying. No. Tell me about the CPU cooler. Uh, so the CPU cooler's got a couple of really nice features. It's of course a 240 mil all-in-one liquid cooler, which is easier and quicker to install than a custom loop. Uh, we've got a customizable uh, OLED panel on the CPU water block as well. Great for memes. Fantastic for memes. Yeah. I've had Bear grills on mine drinking his own weed. Oh. Highly recommended. So you can't just have the Asus logo on there, you can customize it completely. Uh, furthermore, we've also got a couple of 120 mil Noctua fans, which means this thing is gonna be super quiet, super silent, and perform really, really nicely indeed. Very well said. Sticking with the ROG theme, we've got the Thor 850 watt platinum power supply. It's got a screen on it, much like the CPU cooler, an OLED panel here, as well as RGB. I don't know about you, but it's very important If to it me. doesn't have RGB, it's not worth putting in. I'm not interested, exactly. <laughs> uh, and this RGB is Aura Sync, so we'll sync up with our graphics card and CPU cooler and motherboard, uh, which is really, really nice indeed. Corsair has, Corsair has, it is Corsair has, yeah. You always should think it should be have, but it's has. Of course it has, it's a singular yeah, company. Yeah. <laughs> Grammatical lessons with Marcus Cole. Are we leaving that bit in? Corsair has actually really helped us out with the white theme though, and they've supplied us with a load of RGB fans and the RAM. Vengeance Pro, we were talking about this when I arrived actually. We've got a 16 gigabyte kit running at 3200 megahertz, but then there's also the dummy kit. So there's no RAM in this. It's actually just to make everything sort of look a little bit neater, but I don't really think there's that much point buying this anymore because RAM prices have come down to the point where you could just get more RAM more or less for the same money. Sorry Corsair, you're a little bit late with that one. They're gonna kill me for saying that. I'm just gonna <laughs> use it anyway. LL fans though, fantastic fans, my favorite fans. Love these in white, the best in white. Exactly. So good. We're using all of their RGB stuff. So we've got the LL fans, which are fantastic for performance, as well as having fantastic RGB and effects. And on fans, that is actually something that makes a big difference. And we're gonna be controlling it with a lighting node pro and then putting some RGB strips around the outside as well to make everything bright and vivid. So to start this build off then, we're gonna do things slightly differently because if you go over to James's channel once you've watched this, you'll see that we've actually started to take apart this motherboard. We've got a few different VRMs and things that have come off and they've got a few different sections. So we're painting the metal bits and then keeping the black plastic. Hopefully everything will still work and will still look good. And then when we pair that with the graphics card, which is also drying outside, um, it, everything should work and everything should look nice and unique. But this is the Dark Base 700 and this is a limited edition case. It's one that I really like. 
if you want something that's a bit more traditional. I've seen quite a few cases recently that do things a bit differently and I like that, but there are plenty of people that want a traditional tower and this one is great because it fits a lot of stuff in, it's fairly easy to cable manage and it's also quite quiet as well. I have no idea how many computers I've built now. It's, it, it's a lot. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a hundred, but it's definitely getting there anyway. And it always seems that there's something that seems to get in my way at some point during the build. It very rarely goes completely smoothly and I would wager that spray painting stuff is probably asking for trouble, but you never know. Cool. Fans. They'll still work. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I've lost my screwdriver. It's all gone wrong. I oh, know it's in, it's in the case. I always think that putting fans in is really boring and not very really interesting to watch. Let me know in the comments. Engagement, <laughs> that's 200%. Please, we need the engagement. Please tell us anything. Turning. Is the sky really blue or is it purple? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Fans are now in. It actually took a little bit longer than I'd like. I hate doing the fans in the radiator. Something always seems to go wrong. This time because a screw was just going down the bottom of the case and I was like flipping it to try and get it out. Nightmare. The bit that I do always quite like doing is actually with the motherboard though because this is normally fairly straightforward and it doesn't really take that much time and you don't have to fiddle about inside a case. So if you've never put a CPU in your system before, there's a little gold arrow. You just line that up with a gold arrow on the motherboard and then with absolutely no force, that just drops into place really easily. You grab this little lever, make sure that is all the way down and boom. RAM is pretty similar. You just gotta make sure that you've actually got them in the right slots and that the orientation is correct. So here I need to swap this around the other way. This is one of those dummy sticks and I'm placing this nearest to the CPU. Then I need to get a real stick of RAM and put it in the one next to it because we're using these two slots as that's how the dual RAM system works in this one. I think I've put that in the wrong way round. No M.2 SSD. So this is pretty much ready now to actually go in the system other than those heat sinks so let's go see if they're dry. I think it's pretty good. I think there's a couple of areas that if we were doing it again, we'd know to sort of be a bit more careful with, like the side of this is slightly underdone. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So maybe a third coat on some of the things, but actually I think for, bearing in mind we, we planned this this morning at about half eight in the morning. Well, you were late, it's just about half nine. I, I was late as well. I think it's gone quite well. It looks a, a bit whack, but not too bad. That is, I think that is a future product line. I, I actually really rate a white and black motherboard. I'm that does look good, doesn't it? It does, yeah. So this is the graphics card. You can see on the front, I made the decision just to paint one of the fans white because we didn't know how it was gonna come out. I personally would say that I would think that all three white would look better, but we don't know how it's gonna affect performance. So this is a little bit of a test run. I think we're gonna water cool this build later anyway. So it doesn't matter too much, but especially the top, that bit there looks absolutely fantastic at the very least. The back, unfortunately, the ROG logo was really tough to actually get to look good. You can see we've missed a little bit. So if we were doing this again, we definitely would do things a little bit differently, but I think for a first attempt, not too bad. You can see our video over on James's Geekawatt channel if you wanna see the ins and outs on how we actually sprayed this and close, a, a closer look, I guess, on how it all comes out. But now it's really the time to actually put this into the build and see what, what it looks like once everything is in the system. So we've already swapped out all of the fans. That bit is done. Now it's time really just to put in the motherboard. And you can see already the theme matches perfectly. So we're gonna do this as a little bit of a fast, I say fast motion, that doesn't make sense, but we're not, not gonna worry too much about showing you all of the ins and the outs. I, I really wanna make you see what it looks like when it's done. Motherboard is in and check this out. I wasn't sure before I started how it was gonna look, but I'm actually so glad we've painted what we have. It's so good, look at it. That's exactly what ASUS should make. Why do they not make a black and white motherboard? Because then everyone could have this without having to get the paint can out. But it's power supply time now which I feel ASUS are gonna be a little bit sad that you're not gonna be able to see it. So maybe when we mod this case, when we do the water cooling, we could cut a little hole out there so you could actually see the uh, real-time power readout on the side. It would sort of make it make a little bit more sense, I guess. Top tip when you are actually putting a power supply in is to make sure you actually put the cables in before you put it in. Otherwise, it's a lot harder to actually get all of these cables into their respective holes. I probably should have mentioned that we were actually using a SSD for this build. This is one 
from Kingston, though personally these days I would always recommend going for NVMe if you can rather than SATA just because it's less effort to do, they're faster and they're not really that much more expensive at the moment. And then the GPU we can just click into place, he says. And now we can get our first look at what the system actually looks like. And definitely that bit is a bit disappointing, I'll be <laughs> honest. But everything else I think looks really good, especially this down here, that's really nice and clean. Uh, but that actually came off. It was, whenever we used masking tape, it was a little bit more difficult to actually get a really clean look where we were painting over it. So I would say if you can paint in sections and do the complete thing, it's a lot easier to actually get a nicer finish. What is going on here? I don't know what I've done. I've cocked up. Oh, that's a CPU cable. <laughs> How long is that? Oh. <laughs> what an idiot. Fast forward, probably around about half an hour of cable management and we've got it all connected. I'm very, very impressed with how it's gone really. For a complete Stormtrooper white build, I think we're really onto something here. And I know I've said this already a couple of times, why are there not more white components? When you can do something like this, it looks that little bit different, it's awesome. But here we go. Is everything connected? I think. Oh. We've got noise, we've got colour. We've got the RG logo. We've got orange on the front, we don't want that. Pink. White, there you go. Let us know what you think of this system down in the comment section below. Are you a fan of white builds, maybe modding things? Is this something that you would do to your own components or do you think it's a bit risky? Have we done a terrible job showing that it should never be done? And obviously if you do want to see us actually paint everything, you can find that video over on James's channel. It's Geekawatts. But until next time and that water cooling build, thank you so much for watching. Current pricing to everything is down in the description below. Please hit the like button if you've enjoyed it. It helps out so, so much. You really wouldn't believe. And I will see you, or we will see you in the next video.